Hey guys, in this episode we're talking about deploying Rails to a staging environment and how to set all of that up. Now Rails comes with three environments out of the box. We have test, where we run our test suite and check that all of our code works. That runs locally or on a CI server somewhere. We have the development environment, which we use locally and it's optimized for editing and changing things all the time. And then we have the production environment, which is optimized for loading things and caching them and making it run as fast as possible. Production's where we deploy the code to a remote server somewhere. It has a database and a domain pointing to it and our users are using that as the real application. So when we talk about setting up a staging environment, we want something very close to production, but we want it in a test environment. So we can go test new features and make sure that they work with real data and with other users. And then we can go to production and deploy that and know that we've tested it locally and in staging and that it should be safe for production. So when you're building complex applications, a staging environment, it's great to be able to test things with other people and have a server that's on the internet that you can use to test with those other developers or teammates that you're working with. So let's go and set up a staging environment in a Rails app. Now, when Rails boots, the config application.rb file is where things start. This um, is where configuration is set up for the entire set of environments. So test, production, development, everything should use these settings. So for example, a time zone. You want that to be the same whether or not you're in test or development or production. You want them all to use the same time zone. But there are a lot of things that are specific to development or test or production. For example, in development, we don't want to send out real emails, so we'll set up something like letter opener so we can send an email and it will just be stored as a file on disk and we can see it generated the correct email. But in production, we want to actually send the email out, so we need something like postmark or send grid to actually send the emails. Also in development, we don't do caching in things generally because we need to edit files and we don't want an old stale version of that on accident. So we generally turn off caching for development and in production, we enable caching of classes, we eager load everything um, and so on. And that is where Rails can optimize for performance. So our staging environment needs to be closest to production as possible but there are things that we don't want to do. Maybe we don't want to send emails out to real users. We could use an interceptor for that or we could just turn off email sending in staging. And the way that we can set this up is we can go and copy the production environment file and we'll create a new file called staging.rb. And we wanna keep this as similar to production as possible. So for example, we'll leave all of these settings the same but we might go in here and change the email settings and change it so that it doesn't actually send out real emails or we'll add an interceptor so any emails that are sent out get sent to us as employees of the company but not actually real users in case there was a real email in the staging database. Speaking of databases, we wanna go into our config database.yaml file and we want to add a staging section in here. And again, in general, you're gonna to want to copy the production environment every time and then make adjustments to it and rename it to staging. So we'll call this one to-do list staging and uh, we can leave the environment the same, but generally when we deploy to Heroku or Render or Hatchbox, they're all gonna be setting a database URL environment variable and it's gonna ignore this information set here, but it's good to have it just in case. So in general, it's going to use the database URL environment variable instead of this. Now you're gonna to want to go through all of the rest of your configuration files as well. So for example, with storage.yaml, we may have one here for Amazon storage. We're gonna to wanna to copy that for staging and put it in a different bucket for staging. So you might have a bucket called, you know, my app bucket, but you will want for staging to have one that's like my app staging and upload those staging files there instead. So I'm not actually using that in this example um, because I don't have an app that uses active storage, but it's something important to go through this file. Your, um, if you have secrets, 
You'll want staging in here as well if you have Rails credentials. You want to add the Rails credentials um, environment there. So for example, we'll run Rails credentials edit environment equals staging. And this will open up a staging credentials file. And we can go and put, for example, here, our AWS secrets. If we uncomment those, what we'll see here is that we have now config credentials staging.key and config credentials staging.yaml.encrypted. And so we'll take this staging key and set that as the Rails master key in our production or our staging environment on Heroku. So you'll want to go through and change all of those configuration settings so that there are separate databases, separate upload locations, separate sidekick configurations for staging because generally staging will use the same stuff as production, a Pro Postgres database on each, but they'll be separate and staging will be smaller. Production will have real production data, maybe hundreds of gigs, and staging will maybe have one gig of data and it doesn't need to be as expensive as production is. So this is where we can go and fine tune everything and set up those two different environments. Once you've gone through all of these files, there's not very many that you have to touch, but there will be several. Once you've gone through those, you can commit them to git and you can say git add and you can add your config staging or environments staging.rb. You want to add your a YAML encrypted file, so get add config credentials staging YAML encrypted and so on for all of your other changes. Now the last thing I want to mention is that you can have gems for specific environments. So let's take a look at our gem file. This is pretty typical. We have gems that are available in every environment and you can see those here like Rails. We always want Rails no matter what environment we are in. But in development and test, we may want Bybug. So Bybug is in a group called development and um, a group called test, which match the Rails environment. So the gem file is also going to be affected by that. So you want to make sure that if you have a gem um, in here and it's got group production on it, you also want to make sure that it is in the staging group as well. So that's an important thing to know. We don't have any that are specific to production or staging. And in general, the gems that you will want in production, you want in every other environment as well. It's not super common, but it can happen. So I wanted to mention that before we move on. Then once you're done, you can say git commit dash m add staging environment. And you can commit this and then push that up to your git host and we can then go deploy our application. So here on Heroku, I've deployed the app into production, which is the default for Heroku. It's going to always deploy as the production environment. We have added a database and deployed our code. And what Heroku has done is set some config variables automatically for us. It set the rack environment and the Rails environment to production. So to run staging, we need to set rack env and Rails env to staging. And then Rails will know and Rack will know as well that we need to load that config staging.rb file. And that is really all there is to it. So we can go into Heroku and create a new application. And we can go into settings and we can say, let's add the Rack Env staging. We'll add that. We'll add Rails Env as staging. There we go. And we need to run the Heroku command to add the git remote. And we're going to call ours Heroku staging because I already have the Heroku git remote set up for production. And we're going to name our app here and that's going to be staging example app. And there we go. So now we can git push Heroku staging master. And that's going to push our code up to the Heroku staging environment and deploy it. So this will have the new Rack and Rails M's already set as it goes through and installs our um, code and all our application stuff. And we'll be able to see in here that they will fill in some of those other environment variables like we see in this app for our Rails log to standard out and things like that because they'll detect that it is a Rails application. Um, but we'll go through and wait for this deployment to finish in order to see all of those changes. 
And now that our deployment is complete, we can refresh our Heroku application and under the config vars now, we'll see Rails logged to standard out, Rails serve static files, and so on have been generated for us automatically because it detected that there was a Rails app. So this is good to go now, and on our overview, we'll need to make sure we have a Heroku Postgres database added. You can go ahead and add that yourself if you need it. You might also need Redis, um, but you can add your databases and things now. And then we can go into our terminal and run Heroku run Rails DB migrate, and we need to specify our um, staging example app here so it knows which to connect to because I have this one app connected to staging and to production. So this is gonna boot up um, that command and run it on our staging environment for us. It's gonna run our migration, so we have our to-do list table on that separate database um, for staging instead of for production. And once that is done, we can open up our application and we can create our to-dos here. And those are going to be separate from the to-dos here for production. So if we refresh this and we refresh this, they have separate data in them and that shows us the correct um, information for staging and for production. So that works great. Now let's go ahead and set up a, a pipeline. So Heroku has the concept of a pipeline where you might deploy your application to staging and then promote it to production once you've tested it and made sure that it is functional as needed. And then you can go and say, okay, this is ready, go deploy it to production. So for this, we'll have our example app pipeline, we'll call it that, and we will connect this to the, um, the application there. And so we'll create this pipeline We'll add our staging app. We'll have staging example app here. And then we'll have production example app on the production side. And we can simply set that as so. Now we can connect this to GitHub to get some extra features here, but I wanna show you basically how this works. Right now we see that the commit for production is a little behind. We've made some changes to add that staging environment we have this promote to production button here. And what this will do is basically take the compiled staging application and then move it to the production server and update that. It doesn't have to go install any new gems or anything because Heroku has compiled an image for us and it just needs to run that new image on the new server. It doesn't have to um, run our asset pipeline or anything like that. It can just boot up the new application um, without rebuilding. So if we hit promote, that is going to then create a new release and voila, we now have a new version in production. You're not gonna notice any changes here yet because we didn't make any visual changes to the production one. We just added some backend code for the staging environment, but that is all there is to it. So now we can go into say our application.html.erb. We wanna change maybe the, the title, um, my to-do list, and we'll put in here rails.env. And what we should see is that we will see development or production or staging or whatever it is in the header. So if we make this change, we can say get status, we'll add the navbar change, we'll push that commit up. So add rails.env to navbar, get push, and we can get push Heroku master or a Heroku staging master for that. So we'll deploy this copy to the staging environment. So once this is done, we'll be able to refresh this and we'll see that. So we'll wait just a second. So now that our deployment is complete, we can open up the staging app and refresh and we'll see the staging header in the nav bar and that's great. So our changes have been promoted. In the production version, we haven't updated anything yet, so we can look at this and say, okay, um, let's approve this and let's make that happen in production. So same thing as before, we just simply promote to production. We don't need to deploy to production because we've already deployed the image and we can just bump that as a new release and it's almost instantaneous. So there we go, in production, we will now see after the app restarts 
It will take a second, but we will see the new changes basically immediately. We didn't have to wait for a deploy at all. So that's really, really cool and a very handy thing. Now we can also move the app around if we need to or anything like that, but generally that is not something you need to do and you're good to go. So there we have it. We are able to deploy new um, releases to staging. We can do all our testing there. And then when we want to promote that to production, it's just an instantaneous change to promote and we're good to go. So that is how to set up a staging environment on your Ruby on Rails application. You can add more environments here. You can also add um, preview environments with Heroku. So if you have a pull request, you can have a Rails app that's just deployed for that one pull request. So you can test those changes and delete the app when you're done. It's really, really cool and very handy. But staging is more of a permanent thing that you want always running so you can always test your application.